creating a low poly is just as important as creating the high poly because it is what is going to sh be showing in the game at the end it's very important to understand how to prepare your low poly so it holds all the information from the high poly meaning all the silhouette details and whatever so in the process you also have to create the geometry just right so that it holds the correct geometry i mean the correct detail your high poly and you also have to put uvs so that things don't get warped and then that uh, you can use other materials right so in this video i cover creating a low poly for an organic acid um, this is an organic acid in the sense that it is a stone peeler and it has a lot of chipped up edges and a lot of other things right this technique can pretty much be used for anything you know statues rocks whatever and here the the main thing is that instead of starting the low poly from scratch one triangle at a time you use zbrush uh, decimation master to create a nice decimated model so what that means is that it's going to grab the high poly model and it's going to um, process it so that it, it, it you know it, it makes a very low res version of it right so if you're not familiar with the decimation master what you do is you go to the top and to see plugins and you go to decimation master i have all the buttons at the bottom docked on my on my ui just for ease of use and what you want to do is you want to save two versions one that's a little bit high that still retains some of the details of the high poly model and another one that's a little lower like this one on the screen right now this one is what we're going to use to create a low poly the final low poly right so in cbrush every time you say pre-process it's going to pre-process the selected the visible stuff so here i mask out parts of the model so that it doesn't it doesn't touch the edges because what i'm interested here is to keep those edges those edges is what's hard to do by hand and that's what i want to keep right so what you do is you mask out your mesh and then you say pre-process and once you have it you say decimate current the percentage of that you use is important because that's how much is going to decimate and usually you should try one number and then if you're happy with that then you save it if not then you just try another number and you say hey, decimate you only have to pre-process once once per level of detail so um if you pre-process uh, again then it's going to pre-process from that level of detail so if you pre-process once you only have to then go change the percentage and say decimate current so then you bring your your low poly and the mid level decimated high poly into into maya and the, the high poly right now i'm just going to hide it and put it in the, in the high layer and here what, what, what is important is to start deleting parts we don't need of the of the low poly right so you can use the selection angle constraint excuse me the selection angle constraint and that way you know allow you to select big large surfaces right so a low poly is basically a mesh made of triangles so the game engine is rendering all these triangles as faces and that's what you're seeing on the screen so what we need to do is basically prepare this so that you know it's it's, it's still a bunch of triangles but it's efficient so that when we use it in the game we can repeat it a lot and it doesn't cost for performance right now this is sort of a cheap model for today's standards and but it still has like a bunch of little weirdness here and there that we need to go fix and as you can see it's very important to take your time to look at your model because there's going to be a lot of stuff that you don't need right and so um for this example what i'm doing is the, the I, I plan on mirroring this on the z-axis so i can get the back side of this thing so it will be like a full a 360 you know piece of geometry in the end but i only have one half because i'm going to be mirroring the other half and i'm going to be merging the mod the, the the verses so i have to make sure that i do everything well so that when i do that that step everything is correct right and like like i said earlier what we're very interested in is is the inside 
Okay, so that means that the the I mean, excuse me, what we're very interested on is the outside, you know, the corners, and the inside has to be very clean and nice, you know, because you know there's no detail, there's no surface detail in there, like as in topology detail. So it, it, we can get away by just having it being like nice, simple detail, right? But where you put that detail matters. So in the end, we're going to end up having to do some vertex paint on this model. So I'm already preparing myself for that step. So what I'm doing is I'm going through everything and I'm using triangulate tool and the collapse tool um, on the uh, Odin toolkit to go and basically get rid of the geometry, right? And it, you know, it's a very, it's a very mechanical process. You know, very repetitive. Once you get the hang of it, you just get the hang of it. You just start going and going. And at this point, I'm not really too concerned about the final low poly count. You know, what I want to make sure is that everything is correct first. So I usually give it one pass to make sure that things are good, and then I come back and I give it another pass and start, you know, adding more stuff. And uh, like I said, you know, you gotta make sure that things end up nice and tidy. So there's a bunch of little edges that don't really contribute to the final silhouette of the model. So I'm deleting them. And the way that you determine that is by creating uh, a, a bake. And then eventually when you see the bake, you'll know that things don't do anything. You know, like you, you can delete, you can collapse edges and you'll see that things are not really contributing and you can just keep collapsing. Eventually, things will get start get destroyed, and that's when you know that you need to stop collapsing because you know you, maybe you've gone too far. So, another trick is to use the the uh, paint selection tool. You know, and I believe you hold Alt uh, Tab and the new Maya to 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 enable it, and then then with that you can select uh, all your edges very quickly. And then simply hit the backspace button holding control so that it deletes all, all the vertices that the edges leave behind. Or if you're using my Odin tools, then you simply just, you know, hit collapse. So here, though, I'm trying to make sure that I don't delete too much, right? But I do want to just only keep the edges. And this process total takes a while you know and you just have to be patient eventually once everything is deleted then i go and i select those faces and using the grid i add divisions you know you shouldn't just add the divisions randomly where you think they should go you know use the grid you know be precise be clean so that later on when you're making uh lod's or vertex painting you'll know that every one meter you're going to have uh, you know, an edge. So in this case, every 25 centimeters, there's a big line in the center of everything that, that is giving me enough geometry for me to keep painting my stuff, right? Also, adding these lines helps you later on for baking anyways, because it creates buffer edges and buffer geometry, so you can prevent having artifacting. And it's important to understand that for this kind of models, you do not, and I repeat, do you do not ever harden the normals when you're baking ever okay hardening the normals is something that old old engines use you know call of duty engines use that but the unreal engine and marmoset said do not do that so you do not need to be hardening anything in fact just just forget that that's ever a thing please unless you get to use one of those engines then you know people will tell you that you have to harden the edges on the UV shells, but in this case, you really don't have to. Okay. So at the end of the day, though, this is going to be all one, one, 180 degrees angle smooth mesh model in Maya. That just means that you just got to make all your edges smooth and it should, it should work. Right. So the thing here to avoid is to have like very ugly spider webs messes because those would create nasty um, artifacts when you bake in fact if you can't get away by um, deleting more geometry that causes that then you should but you won't really know for sure until the end once you bake your stuff 
And so, you know, I'm going in very closely, kind of deleting things, you know, adding more stuff. And then when when it makes sense, if there's a solid line that's not really doing anything, I usually collapse it. You know, so I keep powering through it. And then adding buffer edges is very important because it A, creates better lighting for the topology of the model. And B, it minimizes the amount of... Uh, artifacts you're gonna get when you when you bake this thing so here i'm adding buffer edges to this and then you see as i add this these edges that the the shading on the model changes you know and that's because now it has a buffer edge for that angle before it was just trying to do its best to kind of like transition that tangent but now everything's flowing nicely and i make sure that i keep things consistent you know i make sure that if i can i i create lines this, you know, so that it follows, it still follows the grid. So eventually you'll finish, you know, you, you'll see that the process is the same everywhere. You clear out big areas and you go and clean it up afterwards, right? Having to do this by hand from scratch from one triangle at a time is very time consuming. Um, this model is, well, this video is split up by almost 500%, but this, this entire model took me about an hour. But this is not final because we will we will not know how how it is until we actually bake it, right? And the other thing I wanted to mention here is that it's important to understand pixel ratio. So, excuse me, pixel ratio, right? So here, what I'm doing is I'm assigning a planar projection first, and then I am uh, relaxing on the on, on horizontally. And I have I have special tools for that. I have a special marking menu for that. And so you know, and uh, to me, sometimes unwrapping the model helps me see things that I couldn't see before. Uh, you know, and things that need a little bit of more cleanup. And it's also important that the UVs themselves are nice because eventually we're going to be tiling the material over all this stuff. You know, and then also this came from a decimated model, so it's gonna be all wonky and funny. So you gotta make sure that it's lined up with the grid the best you can when possible. Also the UVs also have to be lined up the best you can, right? So over here the trick is to set to set this to five twelve pixels per meter is simply to go to the uh, uh UV toolkit and then go down to the UV to the UV set, uh, excuse me, texture resolution and set it to 512 using the 2048 texture. 